Happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you enjoyed a skit with Michael Myers for a movie that doesn't have Michael Myers. Welcome to my review of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Every single Halloween for the past three years in a row, I've reviewed one of the Halloween films on October 31st. And this year, we're talking about the very first one that decided to scrap the character of Michael Myers entirely and go forth with a brand new narrative. And I want to address something really quick for anyone who might be confused. Last year, in my Halloween 2 review, I did say I wanted to review every Halloween film leading up to the new one this year. But I realized, kind of after saying that, that that would have just gotten very tiring after a while. Also, I decided I would go forth with the pre-1970s series because I felt that there wasn't enough entertainment like that on YouTube. There wasn't enough people talking about older films. And so I wanted to try to add to that conversation as well and still review these Halloween films when Halloween rolls around. Now, I respect the filmmakers for trying to do something different. Halloween 2 said, okay, Michael Myers, you're done. So with Halloween 3, they decided to go forth with this new idea where every single Halloween they would have a new Halloween-themed movie within this franchise with different adventures. That's potentially a really good idea. And that might have worked if they made a good movie, but they didn't. We got Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Now, I don't want to diminish the fact that this film actually does have a considerable amount of admirers. People over the years have felt that the movie is underappreciated or that it got a bad rap. While I can definitely understand that, I really don't agree. I think this is a pretty terrible film, largely because it's incredibly boring. And that's one of the greatest sins a movie can make. If you saw my review of Manos, The Hands of Fate, you would have heard my friend Joe say that. A movie that's just nothing, that's just bland and, and barely interesting at all, it's almost worse than if the film was like The Room or Manos the Hands of Fate. At least when it's bad like that, you get excited about talking about it. A movie like Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, it's a chore to get through. One of the primary reasons the film is so mundane is because our lead character, Daniel, played by Tom Atkins, is one of the worst protagonists ever in a large film like this. He's apparently a doctor, although this career never really comes into play throughout the film. He essentially spends the entire film asking other people to help him. What really is his motivation for investigating this company in the film that's developing these masks that we eventually learn are very dangerous? They have this very evil plan. They're going to murder a bunch of children on Halloween day. What is his motivation for being there? I'll tell you what it is. He wants to get some action. That's right. This character is the embodiment of everything wrong with male protagonists in the 1980s. This is not a disservice to Tom Atkins, the actor. He was working with the material he was given with. I'm talking about the character as he is written in the screenplay. By far creepier than anything in any Halloween film. Pillows are in the cabinet and there's milk and cookies in the fridge. I think I should have married you, Agnes. <laughs> This guy spends the majority of the film flirting with his co-workers, asking them to help him with his investigation that he has no real motivation for being on, and saying he'll take them out to dinner, and, and weird, creepy things like that constantly. All right, but this is going to cost you some serious dinners when you get back. I'm always ready for dinner with you. He spends almost the entire first act having sex with this girl. There's a 24-year age difference between these actors, and if that's not really fucking creepy, I don't know what is. This movie got under my skin, but in all the wrong ways. I mean, they have sex twice before he even asks her how old she is. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. How old are you? <laughs> Relax. I'm older than I look. My other big issue with Halloween 3 is that it seems to think its gore is very horrifying. It has so many over-the-top sequences. Carpenter's first film was so subtle. He made the mistake of assuming audiences wanted more gore in the second film, when we really didn't need it. And this film tries to top even that, and it becomes comical. The deaths in this movie are hilarious. So we already know this is a sequel to the previous two Halloween films because of the title, but it also has strange meta, in-universe references to the fact that Halloween is a movie. Almost like it's not actually a sequel and we're watching people in our world who recognize what Halloween is. It comes on the television twice, is referenced as an immortal classic. The immortal classic. 
followed by the big giveaway at 9. Towards the end of the film, when Daniel's all tied up in this facility, it's playing on the television. We actually hear the music and we see Jamie Lee Curtis. It's just a very odd choice. There are so many choices like that that take me out of the film at every turn. The strange protagonist, the weird relationship, how boring he is, the gore that's so over the top, and then the fact that it references Halloween existing. But it's also a sequel. What is this film? <laughs> I understand why some people have a respect for it, because it does take a lot of risks like that, but for myself, they didn't pay off. This film was written and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who now is most known for directing the It miniseries with Tim Curry. He also directed the sequel to John Carpenter's Vampires. I think the reason this movie looks as good as it does is because Dean Cundey lensed it the brilliant cinematographer who helmed so many great films. So at least the movie looks good. It's one of the best parts of the film is that it's a, it's beautifully shot. There are some sequences that do put me on edge. Whenever that jingle comes on that's based off of London Bridge is falling down, which is extremely annoying after a while, there are times where it starts to upbeat the tempo and it gets higher and higher and we're experiencing something horrific, and sometimes that can be effective. But I couldn't care less about the super-powered guys walking around in suits, murdering people in hilarious ways. They were never once frightening. And again, I must reference the protagonists, the man and woman we're supposed to be following. If I don't give a shit about them, I'm not gonna care about the rest of the movie. And they're just so painfully boring. I mean, this guy's best skill is throwing a Halloween mask onto a camera instantly on his first try. Now I'm going to get into a few spoilers here for Halloween 3, you've been warned. What's revealed about this corporation is that like the planetary alignment's happening and, and they're going to be killing all of these children as some sort of witchcraft sacrifice. The biggest issue I have with this is that it takes so long for this to be revealed. The entirety of the film is based around the fact that we are supposed to be scared of these guys in suits and every once in a while somebody dies in a really hilarious over-the-top death. It takes so long to reveal what's actually going on that once it's revealed, I've lost complete interest in the film. And even though it might add a little bit of a guilty pleasure storyline that I could kind of like just for the fact that it's so insane, it just took so long to get there. And when these two are sneaking around throughout this facility and they use this cart, they stand behind it and wheel it to a safe place while all of the villains are in another room. What's more inconspicuous? Two people walking by, or a cart moving on its own. Like, I don't understand how, <laughs> it's like a Looney Tunes scene. The laser beams blasting the main villain while he smiles is just fucking funny. When it's revealed that the girl has become a cyborg, it's absolutely atrocious. Even without Michael Myers, this still could have been an interesting Halloween film. They did take some risks, and I admire the fact they did try to propel the story in a different direction. All that being said, I find the story they chose insanely boring. I'm going to give Halloween 3 Season of the Witch a D-. Guys, thank you so much for watching this year's Halloween special. I had a blast doing these videos. My friends and my wife, we really enjoyed making those videos. So thank you so much for watching and for supporting, as always. I have heard your requests to review the new show, uh, the Haunting of Hill House, and I did watch it. I finally just yesterday finished episode 10. I'll be reviewing that soon, but I do need to take a little bit of a break because I have reviewed and edited so many different videos <laughs> over the past few weeks. But that video will be out very soon, so look forward to that. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.